All right, guys, so we're going to continue in our sermon series entitled Bold. Um, the tagline is it's more than a sermon series. This is how you should live your life. You know, because God desires a certain level of boldness out of his people because he doesn't want you to walk through this life beat down. And he doesn't want you to, he doesn't want you to act like he's done nothing in your life. Because if, if you truly know Jesus, it's a tangible difference in you. People should be able to look at you and be like, wow, what happened in their life? And you should be able to say, well, you know what? Jesus showed up and he was who he said he was. So I just want to share a quick story, man. The time I got baptized, it was so awesome. Because I met Jesus, and it was like a radical transformation. I went home, you know, and my wife was like, who the heck are you? Like, what did you do with my husband? And I was so different, she tried to file for a divorce. So, man, I was so excited. I was on fire. And, uh, man, I waited about two months, and then I got baptized. I was, like, asking every day, when can I be baptized? When can I be baptized? You know, I'm saved now. I, I want to I wanna continue this journey. So I finally got baptized. Pastor Glenn over here in the third row baptized me. And um, it was the coolest thing because I knew that I did so many things in my life that separated me from God. And I was just so excited to have a clean slate. I was all excited to be sinless. You know, Jesus, they say when you accept Jesus Christ, he forgets your sins. So I was so fired up, man. I got baptized. I came up out of that water. I felt like a new person. You know, the, the Bible says that if, if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So I was so on fire, man. I got out of that water. I was walking down the street. I had my gangster lean on. And, man, I tell you what, we're pulling out of the church parking lot. And my very first new sin was a cuss word. And I looked at my wife. I was like, damn, I just swore. <laughs> So I had a twofer. It was like a buy one sin and get the next one free. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it, it, it's so liberating when you get baptized and all of those sins are washed away. Whatever you've done in your past, God forgets it. The Bible says he remembers it no more. So my question for you in this series has been, what does it mean to be bold? And the dictionary says it means to be brave, daring, courageous, intrepid, or valiant. And our memory verse has been 2 Corinthians 3.12. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Since Jesus is who he says he is, since he shows up and he makes a difference in your life, you can be very bold because you know he's not going to let you down. You know you can have the faith to step out and go beyond your means because when you're serving Jesus, it's not about what you can do. It's about what he can do. A lot of the things I do in my life, Anthony could not do. I'm going to throw that out there. I'm not equipped for it. But I got a God living on the inside of me that is able to do all things. That's what his word says. So I want to go over a story today in the book of Acts. Pastor Nick, can you help me out here? All right. So this is Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. This is the story of Philip. He was one of the early disciples um, on the road to um, Ethiopia. And he came across this guy who was a eunuch. So as for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met a treasurer from Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the candidate of Queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch has gone to Jerusalem to worship, and now he was returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. So this guy's a eunuch. He was a uh, treasurer for the queen. This dude handed all his money and uh, everything like that. So he was kind of high up in the empire of uh, Ethiopia. And he just got back from Jerusalem because he wanted to go worship God. This was a godly man. Now at the time, the only people that, that worshipped the God of the Bible were Jewish people. But this guy's Ethiopian, so really, he, he's not in the cool club. But uh, when Jesus died, he changed everything. He made it okay for people that the Jewish people would consider scum to come and worship God. He made it okay. He made a way for the rest of us to come alongside and get on board. Amen. So this guy's on his way back, and the Holy Spirit tells Philip, look, I just want you to walk down this road. You know, and that's the way God is. He'll tell you something. He doesn't give you the whole picture. He says, walk down this road. You know, and then God always has something waiting for you down that road if you're obedient. 
So Philip's going down this road, and he sees a carriage come up with a guy from Ethiopia, and he's reading a book by the prophet Isaiah, which is his text. That's like his Bible. So being a Philip, man, this dude walked with Jesus. You know what I mean? He, he knew God in the flesh. So this guy's walking down the road, and he's saying, okay, Holy Spirit, I see what you're doing. You got me set up perfectly to tell this guy about God. Pastor Nate, can you change that slide, please? The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over, walk belong, alongside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? And the man replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up in the carriage and sit with him. So he, he hears this guy reading from Isaiah. And Isaiah was famous because 700 years before even the birth of Christ, this guy prophesied the way that Jesus would die. And how this man would step up and he would take the burden of sin upon himself that the world may be saved through. The passage of scripture he was reading, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as the lamb is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, what was the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? So beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. So this guy is just conveniently reading scripture that was 700 years prior to this date. And it's talking about some guy that was going to become, and he was going to die. And he's like, well, what's the deal with this guy that's going to die? And Philip's like, dude, let me tell you about my boy Jesus. I've been rocking with this dude for three years. Everywhere we went, man, there were demons that were cast out. There were people that were laying that got up a walk. There were blind eyes open, deaf ears could hear. Let me tell you about this guy who's done something so tangible that all these people who you would have counted out are now up and they're telling people what he's done in their lives. But not only that, this dude was killed for what he was doing. All of the big religious people, they were hating on him, man. They, they, they couldn't understand why they were these big old pharisaical people that were going around thumping their Bibles, saying this, this, and that. And guess what? The Holy Spirit was not moving for him. But there was this guy named Jesus that stepped on the street and changed everything. Amen. And when they killed him, let me tell you, they put him in this tomb. And, and everybody thought he was done. Everybody thought, you know what? He's dead. This is over. This guy ain't doing nothing again. But then three days later, this dude woke up, busted a rock off that tomb, and walked out with swagger. He started going up to people, showing them the holes in his hand, saying, put your finger on my side, bro. Go ahead, Rush. Uh. So, <laughs> so anyway, they started telling him everything about Jesus. You know, how, how he, he was dead and he resurrected. And because he resurrected, everybody, was, everybody who accepted him would resurrect one day. So as they rode along, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? I want you to just pause there. They just came upon some water. They're having a conversation about Jesus. And the first thing this dude says is, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? This is exactly the kind of response that God would have you have. Because if you're serving Jesus, if you're accepting Jesus, this is a way to declare that you are one with Jesus. You know, so immediately Philip's like, dude, there's some water. Why can't I get the dumpy? He ordered the carriage to stop, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north at the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. I don't know about you, man, but that would be sweet. You know, what, what would happen if Pastor Nate's in there baptizing somebody today? He just gets snatched up. Woo! Uh, we snatch people up a little bit differently in the hood, don't we? <laughs> but man, I'm telling you, man, that would be some sweet stuff to see. Pastor Nate, you go to the next slide, please. 
before I snatch you up. <laughs> so I got a few takeaways for you if you didn't catch anything besides snatching up Pastor Nate. Uh, number one, if you believe in Jesus, you qualify. You know, a lot of people ask me, what do I have to do to be baptized? Believe in Jesus Christ. That's all it takes. So if you're saved, if you believe in Jesus, you qualify. Number two, Jesus died for you in public. Don't live for him in private. This dude died the most humiliating, gruesome death. He was spit on, ridiculed. He did all that in public. He did that over the Passover weekend. There was hundreds of thousands of people there that were, that were basically watching this dude die. So this is a way that we can publicly re say that we're with Jesus is through baptism. The number three is why wait for a clean slate? The eunuch didn't wait. He's like, dude, there's water right there. Let's go get this done. That's how I felt, man. Like every day I'm asking Pastor Nate or Pastor Glenn, man, like when can I be baptized? You know what I mean? Like if I'm with Jesus, let me be with Jesus. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to carry this stuff around me anymore. And, and that's, that's the thing, man. You don't have to carry this burden around with you anymore. Because that's Amen. why Jesus came. Amen. You know what I mean? He, he, it's not like he was in a hurry to put on sinful flesh that would get sick. You know what I mean? He, 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 he was God, man. Like, he's up in heaven. He has everything. You know, for him to put on sinful flesh and come here with nothing, he did that for you and me so that you could have that clean slate. Because let me tell you something. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you die, you're not going to be judged on all the stuff you did, but you're going to be judged based on the fact of what he did. Amen. So why wait for that, man? I ran after that, man. I gobbled that up like a Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> so my, my, my charge to you today, man, it's time to have bold faith. You know, let's believe that Jesus is who he, who he says he is, that he came for a purpose, and that you are a part of that purpose. If you're here today, it's not my mistake. It's not